Strip clubs. Strip clubs. Why not go all the way down a, down a rabbit hole? Just discover me, Cherry Q, three months ago. Oh, man, you got a lot to learn about me. Strip clubs is being accused of drugging men. <gasps> Say it ain't so. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's get to it. Tonight, a Fox 10 Investigates exclusive. A lawsuit claims three Valley strip clubs used an elaborate scheme to charge customers credit cards for excessively high amounts without authorization. Nearly 20 alleged victims sued these clubs, claiming they were drugged and robbed in VIP rooms. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum joins us live now with a story you will only see here on Fox 10. Left incapacitated, waking up lost and confused to find several credit card transactions worth tens of thousands of dollars. That's how plaintiffs describe what happened to them at three clubs. The total amount of money charged between them easily clears a million dollars. The alleged victims feeling violated and stripped of peace of mind. Look at the look at the B-roll footage. Within the nightlife of the valley, there's a two-mile stretch from Loop 202 down North Scottsdale Road. And this is in Arizona, y'all. This is in Arizona. Past McDowell. Some looking to stay out after dinner and drinks. Take a drive, and you'll notice three strip clubs on this stretch: Dream Palace in Tempe, Skin Cabaret, and Bones Cabaret in Scottsdale. All three are now at the center of a civil lawsuit referred to as sister clubs. The latest complaint and demand for a jury trial filed back in January. The complaint accuses the ownership of racketeering and conspiracy, as well as several other allegations. There are now nearly 20 plaintiffs in the case. And we spoke to two who want to remain anonymous. We'll call the first alleged victim. Oh, these ain't nothing but white men. Hey, white men, y'all been getting, because I could tell by his mustache. You want to see his mustache? Look. We spoke to two. Who want to remain anonymous? Look at that! Look at that white man. That ain't nothing but a white man. I don't even have to hear his voice. I know that's a white man. One hundred percent, that's a white man. Absolutely. Yep. White man been getting finessed in Atlanta. Now y'all getting finessed over in Arizona too. And one of the reasons why guys don't feel compelled to come forward with these allegations that they've been finessed is because they embarrass. Guys are embarrassed and they're not in court encouraged to come forward. To say, hey, man, it's these chicks and they've been finessing us. They've been drugging our drinks. Next thing you know, they're going to tell me that they spent tens of thousands of dollars on me. Nope. We'll call the first alleged victim, mustang. Joe. Joe says he and his friends were at Bones Cabaret four years ago when he got separated after going to the bathroom. I remember kind of walking through what I thought was like a cloud of like either perfume or makeup or something. Yep. Uh, like dusty uh, from one of the kind of like cracks of lights that was kind of coming through. Um, and that's when I ended up actually in a VIP room and started to get these symptoms that felt not alcohol related. Hold on, sir. How did you end up in a VIP room? You went through dust and then all of a sudden you ended up in a VIP room. <laughs> Listen, I don't believe in victim shaming. And I think that these organizations, if the alleg allegations are true, need to be held accountable. But first of all, man, listen, bro. Listen, bro, you're not just going to say that you ran through a, through a cloud and then ended up in the VIP room. Sir, did you go to the VIP room or no? Did she lead you down this dark hallway in order to get you in the VIP room or no? Or no? You know what? I just ran through a, a cloud and then I just so happened to end up in the VIP room. <laughs> Oh, man. Something else. Do you believe you were drugged? I do, yes. Joe confirms he did not take a drug test, nor did other plaintiffs in the case. But they all say they became incapacitated after entering VIP rooms. Mm. I felt like I kind of didn't have control of the situation. That was really the first instance that I knew. Joe says he couldn't get out of the VIP room while his friends couldn't get in before he was moved to Dream Palace. The next day, he discovered several charges on multiple credits to what? Dream Palace. He was moved to Dream Palace? Hold on, let me back up for one second. I just gotta get the full details. I wanna know all of the story. VIP room while his friends couldn't get in, 
before he was moved to Dream Palace. The next day, he discovered several charges on multiple credit cards. How much was the total? Just under $72,000. Joe's yeah. not alone. Fox 10 obtained Scott. $72,000? Hold on. It ain't nothing in that club. That's even worth $7,200. He said he was charged $72,000? Oh, my gosh. That is crazy. Nah, man, that's a crime. That ain't nothing but a finesse. Total? Just under $72,000. Joe's not alone. Fox 10 obtained Scottsdale police reports specifically linked to the clubs mentioned in the lawsuit. In September of 2021, a financial crimes detective says he started seeing many cases reported by alleged victims detailing common bands? factors like VIP rooms, having memory loss, signing and thumbprinting paperwork, photos taken of them, and extremely high credit card charges. Reports say patrons visited from several different states telling police they were brought into these VIP rooms. Just confused, felt lost, spaced out. I had no, no clue where I was at that point. All Another plaintiff we'll call Bobby describes the same experience. Bobby admits to only two transactions he agreed to, paying for drinks and a private dance. But after that, he says he authorized nothing else at Skin Cabaret. He later found eight transactions on his credit card account. Didn't think that these were actually legitimate transactions at that point. It just didn't, it just seemed unconscionable that this would even happen. His total amount of charges, the highest of all the plaintiffs. $181,000. And the fallout has been traumatic. Certainly strain on not only myself, my family, uh, wife. Did he say $181,000? Hold on, hold on. What kind of, what kind of credit is y'all walking around with and y'all credit cards? Y'all walking around with 80, 100, the highest of all the plaintiffs. $181,000. Who's walking around with $181,000 worth of credit on them? Y'all going to the strip club with a $181,000 credit card limit? Jesus Christ. That's crazy. Dog, 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 dog. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Do I have to cheat teach strip club etiquette right now? <laughs> what, hold on. So you telling me that they didn't call y'all and say y'all y'all card didn't authorize it? Like for, for every last one of my jump, no matter what my limit is, once it get past a certain amount, it hit me with the authorization and be like, hey, uh, sometimes they even call me. They call me and they be like, hey. This charge is really, really big, and it's something related to that ain't got nothing to do with what you usually spend the money on. Is this really you? And then they make sure that they verify that it's me. Where are y'all getting these authorizations? And it's just, yeah, yep, that's it. Yeah, credit limits can go that high. They can go that high. But my point is, where, where are, how, how are y'all getting these authorizations? Like they don't call y'all and say, hey fam, did you spend $180,000 at the strip club tonight? Bro, I got to call and get authorization sometimes to even be able to use certain cards out of town. I'll give y'all strip club etiquette in a minute. And the fallout has been traumatic. Certainly strain on not only myself, my family, uh, wife. I had to get my parents involved. Hey, moderators, uh, be careful timing people out. Don't don't time people out, y'all. Let them rock. Even if they criticize me, as long as they're not disrespectful, don't time them out. I will also tell y'all though that sometimes y'all not timed out. Other times, um, there are filters on because it prevents you from saying certain words. So sometimes what y'all type don't always go out in the chat because y'all may be saying some crazy stuff. So be careful about that. But uh, y'all moderators, be careful, y'all. We don't time people out like that over here unless they get really, really disrespectful. Even if they disagree with me, even if they say I'm crazy or something like that, don't time them out, y'all. Let them rock. 
you know, we have little children as well, so just the impact emotionally was pretty difficult to bear. Joe was in the Air Force stationed in Arizona, now feeling the stress. It's been literally life and career altering for me. My career took a detour that off of the trajectory that I had worked hard to provide for myself. They all tell the same story, um, yet none of them have met. Rod Galarza is the attorney representing nearly 20 plaintiffs in the lawsuit. Police reports reveal how the VIP room process works. After negotiating a price with the hostess, the customer signs a contract, provides a credit card, ID, gives a thumbprint, and takes a photo. No. But as the lawsuit states, plaintiffs believe they were somehow drugged, claiming they barely remember signing any contract at all. They vaguely recall someone yelling at them to quit messing around and hold the pen properly so that they could sign uh, a document on a clipboard, uh, alternatively being yelled at by a bouncer or a hostess to sit up straight and smile. It felt like watching a movie through my own eyes, almost an out-of-body experience because in my mind I'm screaming to myself to, this is, you know, that this is wrong to leave, to fight my way out, but they have the bouncer at the door, the disorienting hallways, like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it out. One plaintiff claims club reps approve transactions via text with credit card companies by using the Face ID function, holding the owner's iPhone in front of their face to unlock it. The complaint says Todd Borowski is the sole director, shareholder, and the president of Wisnowski Incorporated, which does business under Skin Cabaret and Bones Cabaret. In a court filing by the defendants last month, they deny all allegations. Borowski's lawyer released a statement to Fox 10 that reads in part, quote, the cases are baseless. It's like going into a casino and asking for your money back after you choose to be there. <laughs> Dennis Willinchick goes on to say that the plaintiffs were not drugged and the dancers were independent contractors, citing the signed documents and photos, saying, quote, their credit card companies also investigated and approved the transactions. Joe confirms his credit card company left him on the hook with the entire debt. They ended up holding me accountable for those uh, charges, and I'm still recovering from that. Galarza says charges went beyond credit card limits for clients specifically with American Express accounts. In each mm. one of these cases, there, an, an American Express card was used, and in virtually every case, the uh, credit limit was exceeded. Bobby's Amex credit card limit was around $22,000. Yet his charges totaled more than 180,000. How is that? How is that? How did they? How is that possible? Spokesperson with Amex responded, saying, "Quote: American Express policy is to review all disputes, including considering evidence submitted by our card members and seeking merchant support for the disputed charges. We followed our standard policies and procedures in this case. Due to pending litigation." We do not have further comment at this time. According to Galarza, the average total charges for each plaintiff is $72,000. And with nearly 20 victims, That's crazy. the sum is more than $1.1 million. Are Jesus. you still traumatized? Oh, yeah. I've done as much as I can think to compartmentalize this. I don't know how that's possible. And try to control what I can control and get over it. But it will sue you too. every time I make progress in my life to move on, I get an, e an email about it. I get a text about it. I remember that, you know, I could be able to afford X, Y, or Z or have savings built up and capitalize and have those options that I've rightfully earned, but that all got taken away from me. Scottsdale PD is aware and a spokesperson confirms police are working with the Arizona Attorney General's Office on cases involving Bones Cabaret, Skin Cabaret, and Dream Palace. The AG's office declined to comment. No trial date has been set at this time. I think that's crazy, bro. That's insane. I don't even mess with American Express, to be honest with you. I don't mess with American Express at all. Um, I, I have a, I'm not gonna say what I got anyway, but I don't really mess with American Express at all. That's crazy. You got a $20,000 limit and a, all right, let me give y'all strip club etiquette one-on-one. -on -one, and then we gonna get y'all up out of here after I read the super chats, all right? Strip club etiquette one-on-one -on -one is never bring a card with you to the strip club in the first place. A lot of people don't know that because a lot of people are so busy trying to stunt, get booths or whatever. 
Um, never bring a card with you in the first place. Always bring cash. Whatever it is that you limit in the spend, that's what you take. You don't take your credit cards with you to the strip club. You don't take your credit cards with you to the casino. You don't take your credit cards with you to, to certain places. You never, ever, ever take your cards, your debit card, your credit cards, none of that stuff. Do not take it with you to any of these places. Cash only. When you go to the casino and when you go to the strip club, the only thing you take with you is whatever it is that you're ready to spend. Whatever you're ready to ball out on and just have a good time, and then you're going to wake up the next morning like, I'm an idiot, that's what you take with you. That's what you take with you. Whatever it is that you're going to spend. Well, well, Anton, why are you saying don't take a card with you? Well, number one, for most of you suckers, <laughs> for most of you suckers, right, y'all not even really supposed to be there in the first place. If your wife found out that you was out here tricking on these hoes, but you wasn't willing to buy them a bag, she going to have your balls in the vice. If your girl find out that you was out here tricking on these chicks, number two, no tracking, right? Cash only. Cash only. You don't need anything that brings heat back to you in any way, shape, and possible. Cash only. And you want to make sure that you get in the cash before you start drinking, that way if you lose the money, it's no harm, no foul, because that's what I intended to go with in the first place, okay? All of y'all keep using y'all debit cards and y'all credit cards for these unsavory transactions, it is going to come back to you. A lot of y'all be taking y'all corporate cards with y'all, y'all just bring y'all whole wallets, then you're going to end up like them. Then you're going to end up like them, all right? So listen, nothing, don't bring nothing. Nothing with you. ID, cash. ID, cash. All right? Stop bringing your car with you inside of the credit. And one of the reasons, and, and also for the casino, because you don't ever want to go back to the ATM. You don't want to go and do some authorizations. And No, we're not doing that. Look, we going in there. We're going to have a good time. Whatever it is that I brought, that's what it is that I'm going to spend. And we're going to leave it at that. And we're going to go home. And we're going to wake up tomorrow. And we're going to do the same thing over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyways, I'm not encouraging anybody to go to the strip club. But what I am saying is uh, protect yourself at all times. 